handouts home for science projects. So if you haven't seen these yet, time to do a book bag binder check. <laughs> because with the volume of students we have, we would love to talk to you all individually about this, but there's just no way it can happen. So we send a lot of handouts home, and they all have something about science project on the top of them. And most of them require parent signatures, so that that's our way of saying, hey, do you know this is here? Are you aware that it's coming up? Timeline was one of the first things we sent out. Seventh and eighth grade have mo the majority of the same dates. Sixth grade is a little different because we're trying to walk them through the process, trying to go slowly, make sure they understand what's going on. And Ms. Pruitt, if you go to the Phillips webpage, Ms. Pruitt posts, she's very diligent about posting all these forms, the science project timeline, the information, all the handouts they use to fill in for science project information, they're on her webpage. So just go to Phillips and then go to staff and click on her name and it's all there. So if they haven't given it to you so you can read through it with them, you can print another copy or at least look at it digitally. Seventh and eighth grade has this very long, that's almost 10 page packet that goes through the project from start to finish. And we are on the part, I think everybody's on the part right now, where they're doing the experiment at home. That's the big thing right now, they're working on that. All the stuff that should be showing the completed project is should be due the week before we get out for Thanksgiving, November 13th through the 18th, somewhere in there. Seventh grade is on the experimental phase, and I reminded them again, you got to turn your hypothesis paper in on Wednesday, and we went to the computer lab last week, worked on this. We've been working on research. They should have their hypothesis, the keywords they use to search for their information, three to five facts, and a concluding statement. They're turning that in Wednesday, stapled to their sources. Eighth grade is right in the same ballpark doing the same thing. And I know the kids have gotten upset because the timeline has changed. We have changed deadlines because the schedule has changed. And we're, I said it's fluid. These are all tentative dates. We have to work around the schedule just like you do. So don't get upset. We're where we need to be. I promise. We're where we need to be. The packet does have a picture of the final show board on it so that they know how to set everything up. Everything is written out for them. And they're always welcome to ask questions if they haven't. Y'all are welcome to ask questions as well. Email us. We're just a click away. Show boards went on sale last week, and we sent home show board order forms. This is also in the newsletter, and I think they have it posted on the Phillips website. But we sent these home last week. If you want to buy these boards, these are not required. We just know with the volume of information they have to put on them, it's easier because these are almost a foot taller. The ones you'll get at Office Depot, Walmart, and everywhere else, they'll work. They're just shorter. And if you want to buy those, they're $10 for the board and labels. If you just want a board, $7, labels are $3. I try to recommend to them, just from a parent perspective, use the little photo corners, stick them on there, mount it on construction paper so you can reuse the board every year instead of buying stuff all every year over and over again. But, you know, they're teenagers. They're middle schoolers. They're not thinking about saving money. They're like, oh, I get $10 <laughs> off Mama next year, so they ain't worried about it. Um, Did all grades get the showboard forms? Everybody got those. I ordered 1,000 for the school in August, and we got those last week because I couldn't give them out before August 10th, I mean, October 10th, so they got them last week. I gave them to all the people in my department, and they're there. We'll take them through October 25th, and then I want to get the order put in and get them all back before Thanksgiving so I can send boards home. So if they want to take that week that they're not doing anything, get, it, get ahead, finish it, turn it in. I know some people go on trips over Thanksgiving, so they'll still have it if they want to work on it. Um, October 25th? October 25th. That, that's I think those are our fun on the bus. Can we pick them up yeah. if we want to? <laughs> um, <laughs> they do take them on the bus. They do. So. They take them on the they bus. Them, they bring them Are we allowed? Can we pick them up if we make arrangements? Oh, yeah. like, I'm sure exactly. that that's oh, fine yeah. if you want to come okay. pick it up. I mean, okay. we'll get them out as quickly as we can. Okay. They have to send them by a transfer truck from Kentucky to us, and then um, okay. we'll have to sort them by five teachers and 900 students and get them out. But we get them out pretty quickly that way. Seventh and eighth grade, under sixth grade, they have to bring their board to school on December 7th. They should have all of this done. They should have their log book, everything in it. And we typically take a day in class and we go through and we say, take your log book out and let's put everything in order. Let's make sure it's where it's supposed to be. 
seventh and eighth grade, we print them a table of contents, and we do the same thing. Let's go through here. Let's get everything in order. Let's make sure we've got it. We still get log books. They're not in order. We still get log books with nothing in them. But the big difference between seventh and eighth grade and sixth grade is when they turn in their project to us, they're not turning in the board until they come to school to present their project. They are required to take a picture of the completed project and put it in their log book. And if the picture changes, if this picture is not the same as the board when they present, they lose points. And I told them, if you've left something off, lose the few points because it's going to cost you a lot more if you change it after the fact. We won't take their log book if this isn't in here because they have no proof that the project is done. And they should have everything back from us that this shouldn't be an issue to take one picture. And it doesn't have to be printed at Walgreens or Walmart. It can be printed off on your printer at home. Just as long as we can tell that the board is completed. That's what we're looking for. And then they'll bring them to school to do their presentation on their assigned presentation day. And unless we want to keep them, like we're thinking, I'm be going for science fair, we'll let them take them back home. I end up keeping the majority of mine because I can't make up my mind. There are so many good ones that they turn in. So I like to go back and take another look at it. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can specifically tell you before I open it up and y'all just ask questions. And anything y'all want to know? <coughs> can our counselors think of anything I've missed? You covered it all. Yeah. Y'all have questions that you want to ask. I'll be glad oh, to answer anything. What about the law book for sixth grade? Do, are they in the binders now or are they in the composition books? We have asked the 7th um, and 8th grade to get a three ring binder. They can recycle one. We're not being specific. I think Miss Reed asked for a red one for 8th grade for her classes. I told them recycle one. This was their opportunity if they wanted to express themselves, if they wanted Hello Kitty or whatever. You know, get, get a cute one and put their name on it. Uh, if they had an old one, recycle it. I think 7th, 6th uh, grade is doing a composition book. Right or either the three-pronged folder. We've done the three-pronged folder for a decade in sixth grade. I don't like the three-pronged folder because too many kids are already bad about just shoving stuff in a book bag. And if you got to do three prongs, you got to unfold, you got to take everything out, put it in, then put it up, and then it's not going back and forth. This, I can stand and watch you. I want to hear a click, click. Put it in. Click it. Stick it. Let's get it in the right place. Um, let them know about uh, the due date. Child has got sick and That's a big one. That day. Yes. Due dates are, are due dates. We've been working on these since August, and we do have kids that unfortunately will stay at home and do their project the day it's due, and then come to class. I had a kid coming at 1:35 last year. And I said, "Where have you been?" She said, "I was at home doing my project." That's late. It's got to be here the day it's due, the time it's due. I had one chase me in the parking lot at 3 o'clock trying to turn their project in because they'd stayed at home all day. If you're absent because you're sick, get a friend to bring it, turn it in, because you know anybody can stay at home and work on a project. You're probably not going to do as well a job if you waited to the last minute, but we try to be fair to everybody. We've worked on this for months. The deadline's here. Let's turn it in. And you do lose letter grades each day. It's late, so that's a big deal told people if you know I've had one kid he's been on a cruise every December I had him for three years sixth seventh and eighth grade and he's like well you know I'm going on a cruise I'm like well you know that project's due before you go on that cruise so they worked ahead and turned it in and we let them turn them in early if they finish them that's fine turn them in be done with it take the stress off everybody enjoy the holiday season and they are due before EQT so there's no way we would have these due on EQT week I mean, get them in be done with that and a little bit of the stress level gone and it will take us all third quarter to grade them. It's a very long process to grade, and there's a lot of reading. You know, we don't just look at it and say, oh, A+. plus," Because both of these projects here are C projects. They are not perfectly done by any means. There's a lot of stuff wrong with it. And that's the thing we tell them. It's not a frou-frou project. You only get 10 points for it looking pretty. And y'all get rubrics. Rubrics will come home where you can see what we grade it by. And that's what we go through. And we try to tell them, look at the rubric as you put it together. And as you're doing these things, look at your rubric. See how we're going to grade it. And they don't. And they end up losing a lot of points because it's about what's written on the board, not how pretty it looks. And they should fold flat because we're going to have almost 200 of these in the room by the time we have them. And if you've seen the little uh, Q 
community tables we have now, most of the classrooms, 200 boards and the students is going to be a stretch to get them all in there. And please, no thumbtacks or staples because it hurts when you grab them to grade them. I have bled on many a project because they've had staples and, and thumbtacks. Can you talk about the pictures and... Pictures, yes, that's another topic. Thank you for reminding me of that one. Pictures need to document the project from start to finish. And we require them to prove that they have done the project. Because we've gotten doozies of projects in the past where people have actually gone to Home Depot, Walmart, taking pictures of plants on the shelves at those stores and trying to pass them off as their own. And it's unfortunate that we had to go to this link, <laughs> but they have done it. You know, we'll have them turn in stuff, and they're like, I did this. And I'm like, well, your Christmas decorations are up and <laughs> in the background there. Y'all must really love Christmas. Wow. This is a student from last year. If it's a project where you're doing something over and over again, that you really can't tell a difference, we tell them they need to take the picture, and I'll lay these out so y'all can look at them. After we talk or pass them around, you can look at them. They need to put a card in the picture, actually in the picture, not right on the picture after they take it. They need to have it in the picture. This one says control, test number one, and it tells me what she was doing. The next, next picture says control, test number two, and what they're doing in the picture. And they do that for every one of the trials they do for each of the groups. That way they can prove, yes, I did this very boring project 36 times. That's what we do for 7th graders. 8th graders do it 48, 6th graders do it 24 times. So each year you add a variable. But it proves you did it because that's a repetitive motion type thing. And you have to make sure that when it's a repetitive motion thing and let's say you were testing something about a football or a catapult or swinging a baseball bat, even though those are things people would do, you want to make sure the force applied is consistent. So that I tell them they have to build an apparatus that would allow the bat to swing or the club to swing so that the force is consistent. Because I said, you know, Major League Baseball players get paid a lot of money and they're hitting 340. I said, take a 340 home to your mama on your math test. That means you made a 34. That wouldn't be good enough for your mama. 34% of the time is not consistent force. You know, we want 100% consistent force. When you have a project like this young lady who went to State Science Fair last year, she did a project on ants. She had pictures of her trials, but she also had pictures of how she set it up and how she was doing it each along the way. So it was very obvious that she had done the project and done it in its entirety. Ms. Morris, what's the rule with the pictures on the board? Like, you can't see the person's face or pictures something? Pictures on the board. Really they need to have, well, let's just say this first. For the trials, they need to show each trial, whether it's 24, 13, <coughs> 48, depending on 6th, 7th, or 8th grade level. And then on the board, they need to have five pictures that show parts of the project without them in it. Because when we go to science fair at the county and then at regional at the University of South Alabama, we want to make sure your kids are winning because their work is awesome. We also want to make sure they're winning because they should win. Because unfortunately, sometimes you get judges that will see a name or recognize a face and they're like, mm -mm, I don't like them, I ain't voting for them. Or they'll vote for them because they do know them. And we want to make sure it's a fair process that it's judged on its worth, not on did you know somebody or didn't know somebody. And with us being the main ones besides Clark that goes, it's a very competitive process because we're typically the ones there. We'll have half the people and Clark will have the other half and a sprinkle in from the rest of the county because we are required to do it. Anything else about pictures? A lot of documentation. And those are typically due the week before Thanksgiving, like I said. And these are homework grades. That does remind me. All these things, and this says it in the handouts we send home, these, the majority of these things are homework grades. Just to make sure they're staying on track, doing the project a little bit along. It has zero effect on the final grade on these. You could do terrible on everything you turn in. Get it all together, take all the feedback we write all over it, put it together, and you can make an awesome grade on this. And I tell them, take the feedback. Because you're taking my time with my family. I, I give you that time willingly. Take the feedback, fix your project, turn it in. You should make an awesome grade. But if it's the same way you turned it in to me when you put it on the board, you know what the grade's going to be. It's not going to be great. So we got to take the feedback and use it. 
Question. I'm just curious, um, who sets that it has to be like 12 pictures of each trial? Is that like a state thing, a school thing? It's what we try to in, encourage them to understand that if you're doing true research with science, you wouldn't be the first person to do a, a trial on, on a medication, for example. I, I use the example in class that you go to the doctor and you're like, oh, I got a terrible headache. Can I have something for the headache? Sure, take this pill. And then you take the pill and you're like, well, how many people have taken this? Oh, you're the first. And they're like, what? I said, you want to make sure it's been tried over and over again to make sure it's safe. And we used to do a lot more than 12 trials per group, and we've cut it down through the years a lot just to show that it wasn't luck, that there was actually some science behind what happened, and it happened because there is science behind it. Uh, the other example I use is uh, Shaquille O'Neal from NBA. You know, he was a great basketball player, but if you asked him to go through, shoot a free throw, Shaq was not a good free throw shooter, but if he hit it that one time, that he just did it one time and he hit it, you'd think, oh, well, he's great. He made it that time. But if you ask him to shoot 11 more times, he's probably not because he's not a great free throw shooter. We want to prove that it's actually reliable information and valid, not just, oh, well, you got lucky one time. Because I tell them, you know, even a broken clock's right twice a day. they got to have repetitive information that says it's going to happen because through clinical trials, just a medication, you're looking at thousands and thousands of trials and years of research to make sure. And you know, you still hear about medication recalls. After they go through all that process, they still like, ooh, we didn't do enough. We need to pull this back, because it's killing people. That's the idea behind it. I think when I started here in 05, we were doing 48 trials, no matter the grade level. So it's come down a lot since then. Other question? Um, my kid's in sixth grade, okay. so he would need 24 pictures in his binder? He would need a picture of each trial. He would have a control group they'd be used for comparison. He'd have a picture of each trial there, so that'd be 12. And then he'd have 12 pictures of the trials for the variable group, the one he changed from what was normal. And then he would have at least five pictures to go on the board, so you're looking at least around 30 pictures. It should be in the information that Pruitt and Castle have sent home. Okay. Is there, and this is on their website, this is on my website. You can download it. Question. I apologize if you said this. Have the students, I have a sixth grader and an eighth grader, have they been given deadlines already? August. We, we start on this, this. week one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Look, we start on no, this week No, I know, no, we talk, oh, we're already moving forward on yeah. the project, because we've done this before, but they will, I need to, all right. Find out what the deadline well, the kids are, are organized I mean, I know and they're the deadline, on binders this year, the deadline so that makes it harder probably for y'all to find their stuff because it's but are there harder for them to put along it. the way. That's what I mean. There yeah, are we send them the a timeline. They have that. A timeline. Yes. Okay, that's what they are holding out on me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's fine. <laughs> I sent no, these to cool. print shop for 7th and 8th grade, and we sent them out mid mid August. Okay, but it's harder for the kids to find their things this year, even with them organizing their own stuff. With the new binder stuff. And that's why we encouraged them to so keep a separate binder for right. science projects. And seventh grade, we asked them, to, when we gave this out in class, we asked them to actually write all these dates in their planner and then give this to you. <laughs> so that they would have their copy in their planner and this would go to mama and daddy. I said, you stick it on the refrigerator wherever it needs to go so that you can stay with them this week together. That's on y'all's website, though, right? It should be. Yeah. Is that this? That's Time seventh line. and eighth grade. Is it's seventh and eighth. Seventh and eighth have the same deadlines. But six is different. Six is just a little bit different because okay. we move a little bit slower. Because I'll look up your side. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> That's fine. It's out there. So uh, even if your child is in eighth grade and has obviously a different teacher than yourself, it's everything's the same. Unless they've changed it, and I, I don't think so. Because okay. I I send it to print shop mom I'm like, here okay. y'all's deadlines. Okay. Can I ask one more question? Sure. So when they come, so we're new eighth grader. Okay. So that's why I'm trying to take all this in because we haven't had the ability to. And that kind of learn. Constantly remind the teacher I'm new because we do have a lot of students. I know I have several new people. And right. We want to take more time with the ones who haven't done it. Before. Right. So when you talked about a presentation binder, that's something that is also on. Think, I mean, I did read the ten-page packet. They came home and <laughs> signed it and all that kind of stuff, and we talked about that. But I guess I'm just not remembering. So there's a presentation binder that comes in when they're actually presenting to the class, and that's the date that it's due, but they don't bring their show board? They'll bring their binder, which is their logbook. Okay. It has everything in it we've done. Okay. 
they'll bring that in with the final picture and then the day they actually put the board up just like we have here they'll have to put the board up in front of the class mm -hmm. we'll have their binder in their hand in our hands and we'll go through the rubric and we'll ask them questions about the project so that'll be in your hands while they're presenting this to the class and the first thing i always do and miss reed and miss Sharma will do as well is they're going to look at that picture and they're going to look at that board and they're going to see if they're the same or different okay and if they are they're going to ask them why is it different okay I had a kid last year, she did not put one of her graphs on, on the board and she took it back and didn't bring in the thing and I'm like, you know, you have lost maybe 20, 30 points and so now you're going to lose three times that because you are days late to it in. You would have been better off just to skip the graph than to lose that kind of points. That's why I tell them, leave it, turn it in like you've got it at that point and don't procrastinate. We are, we're pushing don't procrastinate. Do it a little bit along. We've taken them to the, I know seventh grade has taken them to the lab several days now to work on things. Sixth grade's gone to the lab several days to work on things. Uh, library, I think, is open on Wednesdays now till four so they can stay after school if they want to work on things with Miss Lancaster. And we'll be taking them again to the gra uh, library to do the graphs, to the computer labs, wherever we can get in where there's a computer and show them how to do this in Excel because it's so easy in Excel. You can do create a graph, and I think Pruitt has that on her website. But the only thing with create a graph, if you mess it up, you've got to start all over. With Excel, if you miss one number, you just go in and add that one number, and you're done. It automatically updates. It's beautiful. Done. And, and it's so much easier. And with the new, like Jackson, with the new 8th graders and 7th graders, you know, the 7th and 8th grade teachers are used to just kind of them coming in and kind of knowing the process. Mm -hmm. So what he's going to have to do is go... Wait, wait, just ask questions if okay. they kind of go through the process because the sixth grade teachers are sort of used to walking them through the process and not knowing. So just, just tell them to ask. Okay. Because sometimes, you know, they take for granted, hey. <laughs> and it's easy classic. to forget. Yeah. Miss Island is really good about reminding us who our new people are at the beginning of the year. And we have that list and then but they the list get, is somewhere. But they get with the flow so easily so you I do forget. Yeah. Okay. And, and it's three test grades right across the grade level. Three, three test, test grades, grades third, quarter. third quarter. So it's a, it's a big project, mm -hmm. but They're again, it's a standalone grade in third quarter. What you did on the homework grades right. through first and second has nothing to do with what the final grade is going to be. It's going to be judged on its entire entity as itself. Question? Mm -hmm. I have a question about, like, when they pick a topic, right. and you know you pick your maybe five topics and let the teacher pick, what is a better way of picking a project so that you can get one that you like and not get stuck with one that you really like? Sounds like a sixth grade project. That was seven. So, seventh, I, well, for all of them, I try to push. I know sixth grade, they try to encourage them to work through things, and just because they know how long it's going to take to work through sixth grade, if they don't come up with a topic that we know is measurable and meaningful, they'll say, here are some topics, pick one of these, and we'll do one of these. I have really pushed seventh grade, and I've worked with Ms. Sharma, because Ms. Sharma's new to our school this year, and you know, if you're upset, it's me that's telling them no because I've approved all her topics too. So I've looked at everybody's project <laughs> in seventh grade. <laughs> and what we're trying to do is get them to, and this is what we hear from science fair, and this is a big push behind it, is they don't want just stuff you can find offline. They want you to look at your life and think about problems you can solve in your life. Like, I'll give you an example. As one student, she said, well, you know, I'm really tired of bad hair. I hate it when the humidity's high. You know, I just don't like that. Yeah, I said, okay, well, let's figure too. out what we can do with that. I said, and she said, well, my mom does hair. I said, perfect, perfect. Then you have hair you can get to that is not on your head, so you've got some hair you can play with and do this with. I said, you want to prove that humidity really does have an impact on your hair. Like today. Today was terrible hair day, as you can see. But anyway, she has the hair. She's going to take the same length hair, same kind of hair. She's going to curl it with the same thing. She's going to measure how long it is curled. Her variable is going to be that she's going to put them in two different humidities. She's going to put a different amount of water in these containers with the hair. Let them all sit in there. She's going to have the control with no water. She's going to put them in there, same temperature. The only thing that's changed is how much water is in this container with the piece of hair. And she's going to let them stay for a while. And then she's going to take it out and measure the length of the curl to see if the length of the curl actually changed. If it did, then she's proven that humidity and how the humidity changes has impacted her hair. And that's a project she's really interested in. And we, I have pushed them to think about things in their life they're interested in. Had another one that was really interested in, well, why is my Netflix always cutting out? 
I said, okay, how do you get your Netflix? <laughs> if it's my house, I'm cutting your Wi-Fi off, but, you know, how was yours cutting off? You know, and she's like, well, we have, you know, DISH, and she's going to do an experiment to see if she can boost her signal. What's interfering with the signal? Because she was doing it wirelessly. She wants to know what she can do to boost her signal. So she's done the research, and she's going to try that to see. And then others have just like, oh, man. <laughs> they're not interested in anything. They're, they're not really digging into what they like and what they dislike, and they've really struggled to come up with something they want. And we got to the point at the end of last week, I'm like, it's October. We can't keep digging anymore. Here's some ideas. <laughs> See if there's something on there you like. I don't like to do that because I really like them to come up with the ones like that. I've had a few with video games, and they're like, well, sometimes my, my wireless controller messes up. What can I do about that? I said, I don't know. what can you do about that? Let's think about that. What can you do to boost your signal? Can you figure out what's interfering with your signal? And let's do an experiment and find out. And that's what science project people at the regional science fair really want to see. They want to see those things they're interested in, not the same things over and over from science buddies, which is where they have gone. And there are a ton of links on the Phillips website that Ms. Atkinson put there last year, and she has helped us the last decade with this before she retired at the end of last year. And they're good links, but they're, they're, a lot of them haven't updated. And not from us, our side, but the people who actually established the links to start with. When my son was in middle school, he did fishing wire, and it wasn't very complicated, and he actually didn't mind doing it because he loved to fish, and it was like winch wire held the, the most weight, you know, so when he caught the big fish, you know, it wouldn't break. Of course, he's still waiting to get I have another kid doing that. He really yeah. loves to go fishing, and he's going to so, go crabbing. Yeah, so he did something, you know, just if you can find something they're interested in, somehow tied to it, it makes it yeah, not so painful for them to do. Maybe. And not so painful for you. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a big project. Uh, the kid that had the crabbing project this year, he's, he's doing three different types of traps, and he's setting out three different types of bait, and he's going to see which one he catches more crabs with great project and he gets to eat the results <laughs> <laughs> and I told him I said if you overwhelm with your results I would be glad to help you eat your results <laughs> you know, crabs are huge right now in, in, in the bay so it, it's just really digging in and finding that that thing that interests you and some of them have gotten into it and some of them are you know, no and that just, just just varies on the person any other questions anything you want to ask that are, you're confused about or just so did, did, did you say the hypothesis is due this Wednesday? Hypothesis paper, where they're actually writing a statement of what their hypothesis is. This is seventh grade. I think eighth grade is writing the same ballpark sometime this week. And then they tell us how they search for this information. And they summarize what their sources said. They say source one says this. Then it supports their hypothesis this way. Source two says this. It supports a hypothesis. Source three says blah, blah. And then they say, in conclusion, this should happen based on the research presented. And, you know, I taught them 10 or 12 sentences is, is as long as it's going to be, but it's the culmination of everything they've looked up. Because very few of them are going to do research that's, you know, thinking like Mitchell Cancer Institute, where they're taking a new idea and going somewhere nobody has gone before. So most of them are going to come up with a topic that somebody's done before and there's research out there. And I told them it's also how we validate scientific research from other scientists. We take their experiments and we do them over and make sure that they got that same conclusion. And the one I show them and talk to them about is the one with the autism. I'm sure you all remember where the, uh, the scientists said that vaccines were causing autism. And everybody got scared about vaccinations. And then they finally came out and said, dude, We've done your experiments over and over, and we're not seeing this link. And he finally said, mm, I yeah, faked I it. Yeah. He faked it. And in the meantime, he's put millions of children at risk because their parents were scared and wouldn't do the vaccinations. And now we're seeing measles explode in America, and that's killed more people than it should have in the last decade because of that. But it's all about validation of what's out there. What was your question? Oh, the log book that you talked about for the seeds grade, did you give the date on it? I heard you say December Log book will come in with the show board. Oh, for sixth grade. For sixth grade. Okay. For seventh and eighth grade, log book will come in on the eighth, and then their boards will come in a few at a time as they do their presentations. We usually take volunteers first, because a lot of them just want to do it and get it over with, and then the rest of them we just we start going alphabetically, or either reverse alphabetical and assign them a day. We can usually get through four or five presentations in a day, maybe four this year with a few less minutes. But like stuff is due ahead of time, right? Yes. Like certain things, and so I think a lot of times, um, 
like for example, the pictures sometimes are due like in December, right? Or These are going for seventh and eighth grade. They're due November thirteenth. November thirteenth, and you get the kids get a grade for that. Like it's a homework grade, like Miss Morris was saying, and that still is connected to the project, which later is a 300 point grade. So if the kids don't do it, it's like a double whammy. They don't get these points leading up to it, and then it, they're affected with their 300 point grade later. So it just affects them so much, you know, if they don't do it. So and there's a few other things that are due besides the pictures that are worth points, like a homework grade too. So so far we've done the problem, which was their topic question. They did their topic setup, which had their purpose. We did materials list in class and showed them how to set it up because I don't think either one of these have materials list the way they should be. These are both wrong because when we do the materials list, it's a chart and that's in this handout. We want to see the brand, the size, how many they used, color if it applies. And it should be a chart, not just a bulleted list. Procedures, they're doing directions. I've been hammering them this past couple of weeks about this. Write it as you do it. Write it as you do it. You're going to forget something if you don't write it as you do it. That's the way you do it. Because it said that little thing, just that little thing is what's going to make the difference in the outcome. And if you forget it, it's not there because you didn't write it as you do it. Pictures are due before procedures this year. I made sure of that because I heard too many kids last year, I ain't done my project. And they're turning in procedures. And I'm like, how can you tell me how you did the project if you haven't done the project? And these weren't, you know, our, the ones you would expect. It was some of our A students saying, I just haven't done it. So I want to know that they're done. I said, you got a three-day weekend that weekend because we're out Friday for Veterans Day. Finish this project, get those pictures printed, and mount them. We actually asked them to mount them in seventh and eighth grade, two to a page, number them, and caption them. And that way, we can look through and make sure they've done the project. And these are our alarms to get back to you. If we're not seeing this stuff, we're going to start calling you and saying, hey, we didn't see anything on Johnny's project, and we're way into this at this point. Have you heard anything about it? Because we don't want them to fail. Trust me, we don't want them to fail. And they're going to turn that in. I can flip through there and make sure they've done it, give it back to them. And then it's not, oh, God, it's December 7th. i got to glue all these pictures down. i got to glue everything on the board. i got to get it all done turned in tomorrow. And, you know, it's 3 a.m. when you go to bed. <laughs> we don't want that. It happens because people procrastinate, but we don't want that. We're trying to set it up in little pieces along so that it's easy. And like I told them Friday when we were in the computer lab, and Ms. Charlotte's class was in there last week, you know, type what you have done to this point. Type the problem, type the purpose, type the materials. You know what your hypothesis is, go ahead and type that. Because everything that they put on the board, they've got to give us a second copy of in here. Because I have taken those home to grade, and trust me, it doesn't work out well. You know, they fly off the back of my truck, my dog chews on them, my kids want to color on them, so I don't take those home anymore. I take this home, and it's got the second copy in the back so that I can just grade it and read through it, and then if I have any questions about their project when they present it, I can ask them. It's just easier for them and for us. What's and the second copy that's in there? It's a copy of everything that's on the board. So they print it once to put it on the board? Print again and put it in the back. And that's in here on the final setup on the very back. Page nine or ten. Yeah, I think it's on page nine or ten. <laughs> yeah. 